Right now I'm currently coming up with um, a design concept mainly to um, change my uh, Guitar Hero guitar. Um, as you can see, these are all the different uh, designs or illustrations I'm currently coming up with. Design concepts. Um, I literally had to take the whole guitar uh, apart. Um, as you can see, this is pretty much a shell. Pretty much, I, uh, you know, like I said, there's nothing in it. Um, you can easily take it apart. But as you can see, it's pretty much, uh, the guts are pretty much out of it. Now, if you ever plan on trying to paint one of these, it's actually, when I tried to pry this thing up, it was super glued. As you can see, right there, the manufacturer ended up, for whatever reason, super gluing it. They either they just didn't want, uh, you know, a consumer to take it apart. I don't know, but but as you can see right here, I can show you. It's pretty much all the guts. Um, That's pretty much from the guitar. The uh, whammy bar, the buttons from the uh, uh, the actual stick of the guitar, and also the insides. And um, these are like all the buttons, all the buttons, uh, the strum key, and pretty much all the screws. Right now, I've been doing some sketching and uh, eh, come up with a couple of flaws. Well, it really depends on where you want to position everything. But um, as you can see here, since this gets adjusted, I actually have it designed how things are pretty much going to look. And I recently sketched, well, I'll take this off. But as you can see, I recently sketched uh, this here, where pretty much the control panels are. And I found out that, uh, well, my head of my dragon I plan on designing for the guitar is going to pretty much run into that. So I got to go ahead and pretty much redesign it. And um, one concept I'm going to try is. Um, uh, putting on the um, Japanese word of dragon on the guitar. And as you can see, uh, let me lay this out here real quick. Yeah, Let's see. I might go with it. But we'll see. But it looks really good. So, but like I said, I did that in a completely separate layer, and then, like I said, the next layer, plan to put a dragon on that. Well, I finally did it. Um, I basically got everything pretty much all designed through oh, for the uh, dragon guitar. Uh, as you can see, I pretty much did the back part. I pretty much added a little bit more detail um, on the back just because well I had more room to play with on the back part of the guitar than, um, than on the front. But that's pretty much everything on the whole. I had a lot of space um, up here. I was trying to basically figure out where to fill the space. So I figured oh some stars would be a lot more interesting to see. I'm pretty much going for like an Asian feel, so I felt like uh, you know the Chinese flag would probably be the best thing to use. Um, I'm also looking at different things with materials, but but as I like I said, I feel like that one's you know the way that is. I think it's going to probably be the best filler, um, and like I said, it will probably go well with everything else that I have going here. I got my kanji of, uh, you know, the uh, term dragon. That's going to be for this top part here. 
And of course you've seen the rest of everything else, the note, um, the dragon that was sketched earlier, the front part. Um, one thing I did forget to mention is it's good to come up with your color schemes of how exactly, what type of color you want your guitar to look. I pretty much went with uh, red and black. I was mainly going to play around with those two. Again, you can use other colors, but it's good to have uh, just basic simplifying and knowing exactly how you want things to lay, be laid out. Um, as you can see, pretty much I decided to have the dragon become pretty much red. This is going to be all red as well. Um, this is all going to be pretty much black. As for the back, uh, it's going to be pretty much consistent. Uh, drag is going to be red. Also, the stars are going to be orange. But like I said, as you can see, I pretty much was going through different phases of, you know, if I wanted to use black stars, or, well, of course you want to see it with the black background, but I use different variations. Um, like I said, if I use the black stars, that's if I just do, doing like a whole red guitar. See, and of course the dragon being all black. That's if if I went with a whole entire red guitar, spraying the whole bass red. Ugh. This is what it would look like if I actually did it, you know, with a black dragon on, um, you know, like a red bass. Basically, being the whole guitar being done red, and then the black being added later. But like I said, I don't want to push out the colors of red for the dragon. And like I said, I really think that's probably going to be looking the best, uh, how everything's going to pop out. I'm having that done. The other thing I also should say or suggest is that it's good to have your uh, stencils. I pretty much literally cut out a stencil for all the different layers um, when I'm planning on spray painting this. Um, I'll show you. As for the flame, you not hardly might see it, but there's it's actually stenciled, so you can see it now. Basically, I drew out the whole entire guitar, but the part that I plan on painting, and it won't interfere with anything else, it's just that one part, which is going to be pretty much orange uh, for the note. Um, the stars would be this. And I just cut out just the area for the stars, uh, pretty much to be spray painted. Alright. Um, the back part of the dragon. And like I said, this is all stenciled and cut out. It's, you know, as you can see, it's all pretty much a die cut job. And it will take some time if you try to do like an elaborate design. But that's pretty much how I set this up as you can see and of course there's the dragon the main part now you're not going to be seeing his um, eye in this one you're not going to see it see it's missing but I plan on pretty much for the eye itself it's just, it's going to be like the only part I'm going to be painting on the guitar that's uh, going to be yellow um, also the little part with the kanji and as you can see, see right there, you can see the, if you look really close, you can see the die cut on it. And like I said, I couldn't really complete most of the symbols because, well, you know, I'm spray painting it and, you know, it helps to go ahead and, and you know, it, it probably blow off all over the place. So I, I pretty much, like I said, had to simplify it in such a way where it works. And of course, last but not least, <laughs> You see the whole entire guitar, and that one part is going to be the Eye of the Dragon. Okay, get done with the cleaning and the taping process. And the first thing I worked on was the buttons. And like I said, uh, this isn't for the faint of heart. <laughs> There's a lot of extra work that came into this. Um, everything that's on top of here is paint. I mean, not paint, but uh, actual uh, tape. I actually carved out the tape itself and made these symbols here. This is a symbol for red. 
this is the symbol for blue. All these keys are going to be painted completely in black. And like I said, the only way you're going to see the color is, like I said, once I remove the tape, you'll see the red and the blue. That way you'll know, you know, which side is up. That's pretty much how I plan on doing this. As for the front part, as you can see, I'll pick this up here real quick. Um, in detail, like I said, you, I mainly taped it around, pushed things up on the edges. I wasn't going to do all the holes and stuff for this one part. I figured I might as well get the edges pretty well clean. But as you can see, uh, it was it's it's a lot of work um, just to tape everything that's like movable parts, and it helps to get those taped in too. Um, like I said, my reference was pretty much um, uh, customize my Xbox. That's a plug-in for him. But like I said, I he didn't really do anything like this with a guitar. Um, or I haven't really seen anything that in depth is what I'm doing. But there's also the back, which is this piece here. But uh, another thing I did is I filled in every hole. You're not going to be able to see this, but I'll flip it around the other way. You'll see all these little holes that are filled. Those are like little bits of Q-tips. That made they did that so the paint can't really get down in there. But again, I snugged in every hole that's on the backing of this. Um, you know, around it. But it took a lot of time. Very, very time consuming. And like I said, rarely anyone's going to be this adventurous to do it. But I did it. Mainly because of this part right here where I normally screw it up. Believe me, if it wasn't for this, I probably wouldn't be doing this in the first place. But... And as you can see, all these where the buttons are supposed to be working, inside, are, they're, all, they're all taped. And like I said, I pretty much did the same thing with the Q-tips. Broke them off, put them in the holes. Of course, like I said, I did put the tape in first, rounded it out. Again, there's a certain trick to it. You just basically roll it up in a, a cylinder shape, put it loosely, and just make it sure you can unloosen it. And use, well, I pretty much used a paper clip. But, um, yeah, we're, we're getting ready to roll on this. It's it's time for paint, so. Um, like I said, I, some people say not to use paint thinner because it pretty much will melt the plastic. I pretty much used, like, a uh, rubbing alcohol. The Apparently you used the light kind. And, uh, and like I said, I went over, like, the big pieces with, uh, cotton balls and I actually do use q-tips for like the really small edgy stuff so but yeah like I said uh, very time consuming but again you, if you really want something to be really clean cut and have everything pretty much in working order when you put it all back together it's very well worth uh, the time yeah one thing I need also to mention is good to wear a mask while spray painting Good to have uh, protective goggles to protect your eyes or glasses. It also helps to have a, a certain type of uh, device, you know, cost, you know, whatever you can find that you, you don't care getting spray paint on. Because, I mean, it will get messy if you're not careful. But uh, as you can see, these are the areas where I pretty much plan on placing everything. You're going to get spray painted. Um, I really didn't go over the spray paint I was going to go with, um, and he's pretty much you start off with like an adhesion, uh, it's mainly made for cars, but this is good to prep up your, you know, whatever base you plan on uh, spray painting color on, this helps out. Um, it was highly recommended to go with the Krylon for the uh, color, especially if you're going to be applying for plastics for like your game controllers or, you know, like the guitar. I'm trying to uh, put together here and last but not least your clear coat which is for like basic wear and tear or constant rub downs but this is the finishing part uh, for your product it's uh, you know it's a fusion it's basically a clear UV it's basically for clear UV protection so 
uh, again, uh, just like I said, I just wanted to put this in out there in case. And also, the uh, best place to do it, as you can see in the setting, um, pretty much have it in the garage. Do, do your painting either outside in the garage. Of course, right now, during winter conditions, I don't advise going outside. Um, but again, um, helps to have a very clear ventilated area. I'm basically saying this for safety issues. And like I said, it's not worth killing yourself over. All right, all right, well, I'll show you when the product is all done and we'll go from there. This is the finished guitar.